Welcome everyone to our Google Cloud Innovator Tech Talks for Telecommunications. I'm Brian Krasick, Head of Telecommunications uh, Industry Marketing here at Google Cloud. And we'll be talking about all things Edge today. Edge is an exciting topic and it's really focused on what we're hearing from our enterprise customers and our CSP partners. So to explore this topic, I have with me Camille Mendler from Ambia. Hi. Camille, welcome. Thanks very much. It's about time you invited me. Well, it, we, we go back a long ways, don't we? <laughs> Indeed we do. And we've seen trends come and go. And this one is perhaps one of the fastest moving trends that I've seen in my career. Uh, would you agree? I, I would agree. I think just the momentum of cloud and how that plays into not only the core networks, but at the edge has been tremendous. But we want to talk a little bit more about that. So let me kind of dig right in and kind of what I'm excited about is, you know, what is happening at the edge with the enterprises and how are the enterprises viewing themselves when it comes to 5G and edge? Are they innovators? Are they laggards? Are they, are they digging in? What do you think? Well, it's an extraordinary time. Um, you know, we're coming out of this global pandemic and it seems like everything has changed. All the rules have changed. You know, before the pandemic, you know, you'd only have like, you know, two and a half percent of enterprises saying, you know, I'm I'm an innovator, a technology innovator. Uh, now that number is quadrupled. I mean, that was one of the questions that we asked enterprises in this, you know, this study that we did with you. Uh, and it, this was consistent around the world. The innovative ambition of enterprises has accelerated beyond many expectations. And I think for service providers particularly, that means the way that they go to business, uh, go to go to market, the way that they talk to customers and the edge proposition, how they wrap that has to change fundamentally. New rules, new ambitions. Well, what are some of those new rules? Do well, you I th think their ambitions are, are square? Are, are they are they in line? Are they exceeding ambition? You know, are they too ambitious? Are they not ambitious enough? What's that ecosystem look like? Well, well, let's start with the service providers. I mean, some service providers have been in business for even a century or more, right? And they've been, they've been used to being the technology leaders. And now we have enterprise customers who've usually gone to service providers and said, you know, what is there available? Who, in, in a sense, accelerated beyond the ambitions of the service providers themselves. So that's very, very different. Um, and whilst I think that enterprises are very pragmatic in what they need to do today, so I think right now we're still in a recovery in a, uh, phase in terms of let's exert control over what's happening in the business, let's secure our environment, there is, um, as I say, ambition to do things very differently. I mean, one of the questions, and this is a, a really great question to ask is, you know, given any, you know, the opportunity to do whatever you wish to do with technology, what would you enable for your customers? And the number one answer across the board, whether we were talking manufacturing, retail or whatever, was to allow customers, enable customers to create their own products and services. Now, that's an extraordinary answer. Mm -hmm. And you've got to step back and think, what will be what will be needed from an infrastructure perspective from a cloud infrastructure perspective from a network perspective to make such an ambition possible and that's where edge starts you start to understand why edge is capturing the imagination of, of enterprises well well that's really interesting and I, I think that kind of sets it up for you know what were some of the biggest surprises you discovered in speaking to enterprises themselves so was that the biggest discovery or are there kind of other tidbits in there? Well, a couple of things. I mean, beyond the fact that the enterprises are in more ambitious than I expected, um, usually when you're speaking to enterprises, and when I say enterprises, one of the things we, we wanted to make sure that we did was not just speak the, to the IT department, but all of the technology decision makers mm -hmm. across the enterprise in whatever role, um, usually you will see some level of... Um, you know, a high level of concern about rolling out a new technology. Um, what we found was a great comfort, um, an understanding of what, or a perception that they understood Edge, that even today um, in many industries, 40% or more were already using a form of Edge, right? So the technology hmm. appeared to be familiar, perhaps because of their internal data center usage of Edge, of Edge te techniques, that it was building on a knowledge of, of cloud. 
So that was very exciting to see that they had an understanding and an appetite for edge that was far beyond what I'd expect for what is supposed to be a nascent technology. So that was one big surprise. Another one was, I think, the realization, again, I think this is a pandemic related thing, of the the need to orchestrate a fantastic network infrastructure environment with a cloud environment. Oh, and that network had to be both from an internal LAN campus perspective as well as wide area. What what have you heard or seen about the openness of that too, right? So whether you're a CSP deploying a network or an enterprise cultivating your IT to service those customers, closed, open, multi-vendor, what was coming up? What were the topics? I think the number one issue that came across very often was control and control through openness so that I, if, you know, if I really control my environment, I can choose whichever technology, whichever vendor, be it the cloud provider or, or, the, or the networking environment. That's what they wanted, a, a platform that gives them that level of control so they can slot in the partners that they need. That came up again and again. So it wasn't, if you will, a security driven it was more about control over the digital environment. So let's, let's put ourselves in the, in the kind of space of the CSP. And we, we've seen CSP's revenue shrink over time. And do you think this is, is this the answer? Are they going to go beyond connectivity? Oh. Does this allow them that, that step to get in? Well, you know, um, service providers um, as an industry, uh, their revenues actually grew by almost 5% as an industry in the past year. But that is part of the pandemic effect, right? And yes. the, the greater understanding I think some of the service providers I've spoken to have is that they have to hook their business on some, some growth trajectories, but they are not just one product. So whenever I think of Edge, one of the, the great pieces of advice that, that those who really get it talk about is, it's not just Edge, it's Edge plus 5G, it's Edge plus AI, it's Edge plus um, analytics. So it is, it's a portfolio uh, of services enabled through a networking environment, a cloud environment, these techniques that deliver outcomes to businesses. So it's all about shifting to talking about outcomes, not individual products. Sounds simple, doesn't it? But it's, that means a big change in mentality for service providers, I think. So it always sounds simple. There's yeah. always steps to take. And it sounds like there is an awareness there and there are steps being taken. Um, what are some of those key applications where edge is being deployed? You know, enterprises looking to create that self-service model, really dig into these new tools. Okay. What are some of those applications they're looking okay, for? Okay, well, let me step back and say, first, let's talk about outcomes. Because by the way, I mean, that's, that's what you sell an enterprise on, on, on the outcome, not the tech, you yeah. know. Um, and, and today, the outcomes, the driving edge investment, uh, and keep in mind, and this is one of the big takeaways uh, from the work that we did with, uh, with Google, and it was with enterprises around the world, is that seven out of 10 enterprises are planning to invest in edge will have invested in edge within the next 12 months okay now why are they doing that well there's some very pragmatic things they're trying to do one is um to become more efficient that's always a driver efficiency um so is safety and compliance um beyond that they're interested in getting better insights um and today a smaller number are, are interested in in monetization from deploying edge now what does that mean in terms of applications a lot of it actually is um, cognitive analytics. It's visual, you know, trying to capture insight to become more efficient, become safer um, through applying edge in that type of environment. So a, a good example is, you know, I spoke to a water utility and the water utility has, I mean, they, they're in, in a dam type of environment. So you've got thousands of, of sensors that need to report data in, in near real time or as real time as you can possibly get. You need to be able to process what is the meaning of that type of data to make the right steps to both optimize the production capacity, you know, the, the power that might be generated by that but dam, but also for safety reasons. And that's a really good example of, of edge for efficiency and safety and compliance. 
Then we have, you know, later on, uh, there are enterprises who are talking about, well, enabling, um, you know, customers to create their own products. That's that's in, in the future, but I think that future is coming very quickly. So right now, I guess, Brian, I would say that today we're still in this phase of, of recovery and control, but very soon, I would say by 2023, it's going to be real creation and, and disruption. So, so just in recap, they're they're using it. They have an understanding. Well, they think of they edge. do. Yeah. And today they do. And and really, they're looking at far edge too. In one of those examples, they are. They are. I mean, in fact, there is no one single flavor of edge that is prevailing today. Um, when you ask enterprises about what what types of edge deployment they have in place, you'll find that there's usually about three different types, um, and that's because partly experiments, uh, partly partly legacy because they've done it in house in their own particular way, but the ambition to use far edge to, to work with different partners is is growing, uh, and I think that's where the market's going to be, going forwards. Very, very interesting. And I think it's, as you stated, it's, it's moving it is, very fast. It is. Um, yeah, so we talked about the better efficiency and some of the yep. safety items. If you, you take kind of what, what is or what do you expect to be kind of the primary functions, just recapping that of organizational edge computing applications, right? What workloads are going on there? Are they all IoT quick bursts? Is it heavier workloads? Is it something, you know, why would they pull it out of the data center and put it on their premise okay. or put it in a CSP it, network or put it way out to the far edge? Unfortunately, it's not the simple answer. It's a mixture of the sexy and the banal, right? Um, the, uh, in terms of banal, it's like, you know, my storage of, of my really important data, you know, there are different layers of storage and some of that storage better be closer to me. And there might be regulatory reasons why that data needs to be close to me. So storage may not be sexy, but it's it's selling edge. And then we're talking about the, um, as I said, some of the the, the visual, um, you know, cognitive analytics. And actually, uh, sexy but true is the augmented reality. Augmented reality, and I don't mean in the sense necessary from new consumer experiences, but actually enriching how workers uh, are out in the field, getting information to them, helping them collaborate better is a big driver, and that will drive a lot of edge. Uh, and it's it's as much about the people as it is about the things that's driving edge investment. Oh, and, and I, we didn't say, but we should talk about how much money is being spent. And... On average, what we found, and we looked at, you know, mid-sized to large organizations, on average, it was, a, you know, the initial spend was going to be about 100K uh, in the first, you know, year or two. Rising, you know, with some industries spending more. I mean, manufacturing, there was a larger will, will to spend. You know, there are more million dollar investments in edge in manufacturing than in some certain other industries. So I think there's a nuanced view. That's something else that service providers need to think very carefully about. The propositions are not exactly the same by industry. And, um, you know, it's it's not all sports and entertainment, but there's a lot of manufacturing opportunity. There's not a lot of opportunity in retail utilities, in my view, from the, the conversations I've had with enterprises. Why, why do we think you know, you mentioned hmm. manufacturers. What part of that manufacturing process? What part of the, you know, is it and, and, and why? What's that recipe for success? I think if you, you will? I think when you speak to manufacturers, some of them have been um, operating their internal networking infrastructure for a very long number of years and they still have only partial visibility of their business. And that is increasingly unacceptable if you're trying to compete hmm. on a global level. And so there is. Um, increasing will amongst manufacturers to move out of that legacy environment, which, by the way, um, a lot of it is about transforming um, their internal campus to a private networking environment. That's one of the important stepping stones. So when I say edge is a portfolio play, it's edge plus private networks. Um, they want to, there's a certain level of automation they've not been able to do. And, and even simple things. Let me give you an example. Logistics, space management for goods that have been produced and, you know, need, then to need to be shipped out. Simple things like that um, are part of the process efficiency that they're, they're trying to find. And, and if you've been, uh, you know, working in an industry with technology that's like 20 plus years old, it's not easy to change, but they have to. And I think there's a greater realization that they must do so. So even what about, um, hey, just do it with Wi-Fi, right? If I'm a large manufacturer, 
why change? In reality, I think that the both will coexist, yes. um, but it won't necessarily be Wi-Fi because a lot of manufacturing infrastructure is actually still wired, actually. <laughs> um, so just going wireless. Number one, the step one is to go wireless and then what you can control in a wireless environment. Well, you can empower your staff. You can collect intelligence from all these inert objects that could be reporting information. And you can start using automated vehicles, that, autonomous vehicles, that um, can actually transform your efficiency. That's where some of the um, going forwards there will be need. Today, I have to say that manufacturing is interested in the worker empowerment, the machine efficiency. And that needs low latency, maybe not zero, you know, one millisecond yet, but... We're getting there. Well, efficiency, worker safety, the amount of area you have to cover, whether it's on a plant floor in or out when you go to distribution and shipping, that becomes yeah. very advantageous from a coverage perspective for sure. Um, it does. And, and Wi-Fi can struggle in that particular sense. Um, but I think we need to be careful. Um, you know, 5G definitely has an extraordinary role, which is recognized. I mean, uh, you know, eight out of 10 of the enterprises we spoke to, irrespective of industry, were saying, we see that there is a role for 5G with Edge, that Edge and 5G together is, is pretty indispensable to our needs. But I think we also need to be pragmatic. I mean, that's one of the big pieces of advice I would give to any service provider is offer choice. You may know that 5G is the superior option, but you've got to deal with legacy. You've got to be able to deal with that transition. And in some cases, an, another technology in the mix is going to be a, a rational choice. So, so I think that's I think that's you're really kind of leading into it. Across. And it, it's perhaps our, our final question here. What's your top recommendation for CSPs to kind of succeed and monetize the edge? What's that recipe for success there? I think number one, you've got to focus very much on what that outcome is that the enterprise is trying to um, deliver on. You know, is it uh, specifically worker safety? Is it specifically um, getting better analytics to make uh, decisions in near real time? Um, and that's, it's not about creating 400 different plus use cases and saying you can use Edge for this. It's focusing on the top five that really matter for that particular industry and really pushing on that. It's also understanding that it's a portfolio sale. You know, solutions are hardly ever spun on a single technology. So it will be to get that outcome, that analytics outcome, you're going to need edge, you're going to need that, you know, a campus overhaul, you're going to need the right type of cloud environment to do that extraordinary processing that you need to get the insights, all of that. So I think that's really important. And that means not doing it alone, quite frankly. You need to partner. And to do that, you need a platform for partnership that makes it super easy for both the enterprises, who, by the way, are going to be your co-creators. Is that a bit scary to say that to a service provider? They are going to be your co-creator. They may be faster than you, um, as, you know, as part of the partners. Um, and to deliver that in a really simple way, whether we're using open APIs, whatever the underlying method is, it has to be really easy to plug, to play, to ideate. So those, those are my pieces of advice. Get the proposition right. Oh, and, and the targeting to the right decision maker. I should have mentioned that too. It's not necessarily the IT know, department. Right? You have to focus on who's, who is the buyer. Yes. What is the yeah. vertical? Yeah. What is my portfolio of solutions? Absolutely. And now who do I partner with yep. to help get it there? Camille, that's, that's wonderful. Right. Thank you so much. Great insight, Camille. And if you want to hear more about recipes for success by Vertical, please come and download our 5G and Edge Compute Study, the CSP Opportunity, and get that full information and point of views from our global study of enterprises. Camille, thanks so much for Thank you. sharing all your expertise and fun. insights. And that's a wrap for us. Thanks for joining Tech Talk for telecommunications.